Why is it important for us to be doing CSI? Well, first of all, we do CSI because we acknowledge that the sustainability of our business depends on the sustainability of our communities. We cannot have a flourishing business in 50 years' time if the communities within which we operate are not flourishing. So it is only right that we invest back into our communities. We also do CSI because we are truly committed to the transformation of our country. That responsibility should not, in our view, be only left to the politicians. We all have a role that we can play in transforming the lives of ordinary South African citizens. We also do CSI at Investec because we acknowledge that we don't operate in a vacuum. We have been granted a social and political license to operate. Um, you know, we, we, don't, we don't just do business because simply, simply because we can. The communities within which we operate have allowed us to be able to do what we do and make the types of profits that we make as a business. So reinvesting in our communities is only the right thing to do. We also do CSI because we are a true corporate citizens. We can't divorce ourselves from the challenges and the social ills of our country. It cannot be them in Alex and us in Senten. We are all in the same boat. Uh, I often make an example and I say, we are in Senten today, which is said to be the richest square mile in Africa. But a stone throw away from here is a township called Alexandra, whereby the living conditions compared to where we are are worlds apart. And it cannot be right. So it is only a right that we, we, we not distance ourselves from the challenges of this country. That's why we do CSI. We also do CSI because we acknowledge that in this century, in this uh, uh, world that we live in, people want to be associated with organizations that not only care about the profit, but are truly committed to the transformation of uh, our country. And, and people want to know that I don't work for a company that only cares about the profit, but has got a genuine desire to transform the lives of a people where I come from. So we do CSI because we know that in so doing, we're going to attract people who have the same values, people who know that I work for an organization that not only puts profit first, but actually has got a keen interest in making a change in the communities where I come from. We also do CSI because it's simply the right thing to do. In a country such as ours where inequality is the order of the day, it's only right that organizations that have had the privilege to make the types of profits such as Investec give back to our communities. It's only the right thing to do. No questions about it. We also do CSI because it's an extension of one of our key values, which is that of an unselfish contribution to society. It's, it's, it's part of our DNA to give back to the society. So we do that because of that reason. Now, our budget allocation uh, is just over 80 million rands. And uh, we've decided, because in, in this world that we live in, there are endless ways in which we could actually make a contribution to society. We, we can talk about a whole lot of challenges that need funders to actually address. But we've had to say, what is it that we can do and do very well? And our interest was saying, we would like to put people in a better position than we found them. We would like to have people have skills that can sustain them even long after Investec has, uh, has partnered with them. And we thought education is one way of doing that because when you give people education, you empower them for a lifetime. Even if Investec was to shut down tomorrow, that child that you've given education will still be fine. So education was one way of doing that. But we equally thought entrepreneurship is another way of doing it because in supporting young businesses that have got the potential to create jobs, not only do you support that small business, but if you support a business that creates 20 jobs. The last time I checked, the economists say that the dependency ratio in South Africa is one is to seven, or seven is to one, which means as I stand here today, as a professional employed, there are seven other people that stand to benefit from my employment. Now, if we support a business that can create 20 jobs, imagine how many other people benefit from that. So that's why entrepreneurship is another area that we believe in as a way of contributing to the transformation of our country. 10%, we acknowledge that we cannot do everything, but uh, not everything falls in education and entrepreneurship. So where we're able to make small but meaningful donations philanthropically, we, we, we make that allocation in that 10% bracket. 
Uh, now, in education itself, it's very broad. We can talk about infrastructure development. We can talk about uh, textbooks provision. We can talk about nutrition in schools where learners have to go to school and focus for eight hours or so on an empty stomach. It's an issue that pertains to education infrastructure, learners that have to learn under trees because there are not enough classrooms. Another, another challenge that speaks to education, sanitary towels or pads where learners have to miss seven days of uh, uh, school or five days because they don't have those uh, personal items. It's a reality that speaks to education. So I'm trying to paint a picture that says this approach does not, uh, it's not a naive approach to say uh, uh, that the focus that I'm going to talk about is the only thing that we could be doing. We acknowledge that uh, there are many other challenges that we could be addressing but at the end of the day, we are guided by the financial resources that we have. So at this point, I want to take you through our pipeline approach, which basically our interest is to start with the learner at high school level through the math and science support, through exposure to entrepreneurial thinking and, and exposure to careers. And once we are done in that phase, we move with them to the tertiary space where our objective is to facilitate access to quality tertiary education, to support their performance, and take them all the way to the world of work to ensure that they make a smooth transition into the world of work. And underpinning that is a leverage on our staff in terms of their expertise that which they can help us to impact meaningfully that learner all the way to the world of work. And uh, at high school, Specifically, one objective that we have is to facilitate an increase in the num number of learners who uh, uh, matriculate with a decent pass in English, Math and Science, with an aspiration, and as my boss would say, aspiration, aspiration, aspiration into uh, uh, the world of work or beyond metric. And, and, and the emphasis on aspiration is such that in many instances in our country, learners don't have the aspiration because they don't have the exposure. In a, in, a, in a community, uh, for example, in Limpopo, dusty rural uh, village, where a learner is only exposed to very limited career options, that of a teacher, a doctor, a lawyer, what, what about the other professions? Chartered accountants, actuary, actuaries, uh, uh, astronauts, and others. If, if a learner doesn't have that exposure to those careers, how do we expect them to be aspirant to, towards those uh, careers? So, that aspirational piece speaks about exposure. That's why it's also important for us to expose them to as many career options as possible so that they then make an informed decision in terms of what it is that they want to do. Now, our focus is on maths and science. Why maths and science out of all the other possible things that we could be doing? Well, the challenge of maths and science in our country, in our view, is not a true reflection of the potential that learners have. The, the results that you see at the end of the year uh, or in the beginning as the minister announces are not a true reflection in our view of uh, the potential that our learners have in the schools. Instead, it's because of the challenges that learners have to battle with, which are hindrances to that potential that they could be achieving. Overcrowded classrooms, inadequately qualified teachers, which Nick also touched on, the failure to complete the syllabus on time, uh, in some instances, uh, learners will be halfway the syllabus by the time they have to write their metric exams. But at the, uh, at the end of the year, you and I expect that they must actually be on the same par with everyone else. It's not fair. Uh, not enough contact time on the subject matters and content, lack of textbooks and support materials. Those are the challenges that uh, many learners in our country have to battle with in, 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 in an effort to achieve that decent pass in, in, in metric. So maths and science is important for us in that way. And also because of the scarce skills uh, and the contribution that we think we can make by allowing many young youngsters who come from underprivileged communities to gain entry into those courses or professions that previously were limited to a few people because of the color of their skins. It's very important for us to play in that space. Now, in response to those challenges, we have partnered with an NGO called Kukano Center for Math, Science and Technology, who are essentially experts in uh, learner support. And uh, the program that uh, we are running with them has been running since 2005. Um, and, and essentially what it is, is provision of extra math and science lessons to grade 10 to 12 learners 
in both rural and township schools. So what we do is we, for example, if I were to use Soweto, we'll select a central school and select 20 schools that become feeder schools into the program. So in each school, we could select about five, between five and 10 students that show potential in maths and science. And that we do with the help of the school teachers and principals uh, and the districts. We then have them come into a center. In a grade, you'll have about 150 learners. So 150 grade 10, 11, and 12, 450 capacity. And what we do with them, there's Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, offer them math and science extra lessons. We, we provide textbooks for them, smaller classrooms compared to where they come from into the, uh, from their schools. Uh, we, we've got very carefully selected teachers who come from those surrounding schools, but very carefully uh, selected. My colleague from Gutwanom is actually here. Uh, he'll talk to, to, to more of that in terms of the type of teachers that we look for, uh, Colin Komazi. Uh, as part of strengthening the program to ensure that we give the learners the best chances of success. Uh, we also incentivize performance. So once in a while, the learners that do well in, in the tests that they do throughout the year would have incentive dinners for them to keep them encouraged. It's very important. It's such things that you can take for granted. But for, for those young people in those communities, it actually means a lot. And, and it, it just keeps them going. So uh, that's what we do as well. Around December, November also, we, we have the top 100 performing learners as we, as we you know, walk towards the final results, take them to Cape Town on what we call a weekend to remember, just as an encouragement uh, towards that uh, final push into their results, uh, uh, metric results, uh, so it's very important as well. And, and, and all of that package also gives them ample time to complete the syllabus on time. So if there are still gaps from their particular schools where they come from, the program is able to cover those. Uh, and coach, if, if there is anything I'm missing, I'm happy for you to jump in because you are an equal partner in this uh, to give context. Uh, why, why is it important for us, for this program to run? We believe that uh, a maths and science pass gives learners a better chance of doing well in the other subjects. And we've seen this. When learners have got the confidence and competence in the two subjects, that somewhat translates into how they do in the other uh, subjects that they, they do at school. So it's very important. The, the, the wider selection of careers, learners are no longer limited because of a, a passing maths and science and all the other subjects decently so. They then have, they're spoiled for choice in terms of what it is that they can do as opposed to going into a profession simply because that, that's the least that they could do, you know. We, we want them to have a variety of options to go into anything that they want to go into, not limited because of the marks that they got, which are not really, as I said, a true reflection of their potential. And we understand that when learners have done well, they are almost guaranteed uh, admission into university, and, and they have a higher chance of attracting funding opportunities to go to study, which is also one of our objectives of ensuring that we facilitate that access to quality tertiary education. So we are actually killing two, two birds with one stone. One is to get a, a learner out of the schooling system with decent marks, but also put them in a better position, even if it's not an invested bursary that they get, at least they are in a better position to attract other uh, bursary opportunities that will help them realize their uh, aspirations. At tertiary level, I wasn't quite sure if I should include this one, but since this is about maths and science, I thought just for information and knowledge sharing with colleagues, I should include it as well. Our other objective is that of facilitating access to quality tertiary education, supporting performance and celebrating performance. And in there, we've got a partnership with the Department of Basic Education, the Independent Schools Association of Southern Africa. And what we are trying to do with this program is producing what we call a new breed of maths and science teachers. So what we do is we get youngsters who are competent in maths and science, who have passed well in metric, who are actually spoiled for choice in terms of what they can go and study, but still choose to say, I want to be a teacher. We target those youngsters. We partner with the Department of Education and ISASA 
they register for a Bachelor of Education or a PGCE at uh, UNISA. And uh, whilst they're actually registered and studying towards that uh, degree, they are placed at one of the ISASA schools for that duration of their studies, uh, learning from some of the experienced teachers who become their mentors whilst they are there. So that's an in internship program that is, is, is aimed at producing a teacher who is not only competent theoretically, but has also got the practical uh, tools to transfer into the public school. So once they graduate, they are sent back into the public schools and they have to work back for a period of four years or uh, equal to the number of years that we would have uh, partnered with them. So uh, a type of a payback type of a, uh, or work back, if I can put it that way. And the idea there really is to address the shortage of math and science teachers in our country. And we think that's a, a good way of going about it because we, and research has shown that uh, in many instances you have teachers who are very good on paper. They, they got distinctions and so forth, but when they go into the actual classroom, the, the two doesn't quite compare, you know. So this approach says, yes, you can do your degree academically, but we want to, whilst you're studying, put you in front of a class so that you, you get to learn. What, is, what does it mean actually to be a teacher? Because it's not just about standing there, it's how you transfer the knowledge to the learners and how the learners interact with you. And we think this model is also one meaningful way of contributing to the quality of math and science teachers in our country.